Welcome back, folks. We had the uh, Dow up four, NASDAQ was flat, S&Ps were down two. Uh, our guest today, folks, is Bill Murphy. Uh, now, uh, uh, Bill graduated from uh, Cornell and the uh, hotel administration uh, in 1968. He also played as a wide receiver for the Boston Patriots in 1968. Um, he has been all over the gold cartel, folks. Uh, he actually was the, uh, he is the chairman uh, since 1999 of the Gold Antitrust Action Committee, GATA, uh, who, you know, we've had uh, uh, Chris Powell on, uh, we've had, of course, uh, Richard Love on, and then we had uh, Bart Chilton on. Bill Murphy, what, what, well, and also, folks, his website is lametropolcafe.com. It's L-E-M-E-T-R-O-P-O-L-E-C-A-F-E.com. Go check it out. It's a financial website that's geared to the gold market. Bill Murphy, welcome back to TFNN. Good to talk to you again, Tom. How you been, man? Doing good. Been all over the place. And we, this, this past August, we had a big conference in London, 400 people. Uh, uh, 38 countries, Jim Sinclair, the first time he spoke in seven, eight years, and Eric Sprott, John Emery, so it was quite a show. That is awesome. Well, listen, you've done an outstanding job. Uh, you know, it was, it's been a quick, uh, no doubt, uh, 10, 10, 12 years. You know, let, let me ask you, you know, I, I, it, it's kind of interesting. In the last two weeks, um, I've had, you know, I, I had Richard Love on first for a full hour, then we had Chris on, then we had Bart Chilton on, and you know, we were basically, you know, talking about your case, okay, you know, that you brought up to the public years ago, that it, it seems that, it seems at this point, Bill, that everyone knows, but still no one's doing anything about it. Yeah, you're right, Tom, and uh, except for people like yourself, no one's willing to talk about it. Uh, uh, I was on CNBC in uh, February of 1999, and once they heard what I had to say about the manipulation of the gold market by bullion banks and the U.S. government, I've been banned ever since. You know, what has happened this past Friday, folks, okay, is that, you know, every, you know, Friday, the, 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 the commodities uh, exchange comes out with the amount of um, holdings that are, that are inside the contracts. And, you know, uh, when I had Commissioner Chilton on, Bill, he was talking about that the new rules that are not in place yet, they were saying that they didn't, that contract-wise, you weren't going to have over 10%, and they were still, I says, well, do you think this is going to get implemented? He says, well, we're still arguing about what a swap line is, okay? But my understanding is that this past Friday, that J.P. Morgan Chase right now has 25% shot position in the silver market again. Well, they've been this way all along, and uh, uh, we testified at the Gold Antitrust Action Committee about J.P. Morgan's role in the manipulation of the silver market. The CFTC has been in Investigating him for three and a half years for crying out loud. There's, uh, there was five major class action lawsuits morphed into one. It's a joke. And uh, Bart's a good man, by the way. I've met him a yes, couple of no, times no, and I, uh, it, it, have the highest respect for him. But unless they deal with Morgan and have them verify what they call, quote, hedge positions are, meaning backed by physical silver, all the, the, the position limits in silver and gold will be useless. Right, right. And so specifically what Bill's saying, he folks, is this, is that you have... A situation is that you have a short position, and of course, when you have a short position, what's supposed to happen is that do you have something on the other side of it? You know, it, can you, in fact, close that? Like, if we, when we trade a, a short equity, what ends up happening is that the broker dealer goes out, you borrow the equity, you're paying for the borrowing of the equity, and in this particular case, that's what Bill's saying is that, you know, where is it? Is it there, or is it, in fact, well, well, Simon, the key is, is that if they're claiming exemptions because are they so-called hedging? Because you, you can short, you know, just be a naked short like a naked lawyer, at least in the futures market. Yes. But if they're, they've been claiming all along that these positions are backed by physical silver, and they've never proved it. Right. So unless that's dealt with, I mean, this whole thing is a farce, and Morgan will continue to raid the market and flee speculators and rip people off. And in this case, that equals 24 million ounces, by the way, folks, okay? Uh, I, I kind of looked at it. I'm ballparking the number. It's a little bit more than that. But as you can see... You know, a dollar an ounce turns into a big money. There's no doubt about it. You, you know, Bill, when you first started this versus where you are right now, um, headwise, meaning headway, do you feel like that you are making headway now? 
Well, we get, yeah, much less diversion. Uh, well, we sued the Fed, and we, and we, Chris may have mentioned to you, we got some money from the Federal Reserve. That doesn't happen too often, because right. we, and we proved there was gold swap operations. Anybody who's paying attention to the market like we do uh, knows the gold and silver market are managed. I mean, it's actually nothing new. It happened many, many years ago. I mean, for, there was a gold pool for years. And sure. They, they, it's always been rigged. They just kept it quiet these past 10, 15, 20 years, and we've uncovered it. And it's led to a lot of dislocations in markets, and there's a lot of ramifications, which we don't have time to get into now. But here's the good news. They don't have ammunition to keep the market down, which is why gold has gone up 11 years in a row. Right. It's 12 already. All they can do is manage a retreat. And each year goes by, with all the buying coming in from the Chinese, the Indians, the Russians, and some very big people all over the world, they're running out of ability to meet a supply-demand deficit, deficit, and it's going to explode. You know, when you when you look at the context that you know we've gone from uh, you know 252, 282 uh, to the uh, 1717, that seems like you know an extraordinary move, um, nice move, ten year move. But when you do bring up the aspect that when you look at number one, what the supply is, you know, a lot of these miners right now, it's actually costing them you know, $1,100, $1,200 to get it out of the ground. When you look at that aspect, when you and I go back 10 years ago, I mean, it was, what, 325 to get out of the ground. That's right. And that's why the, uh, one of the reasons, and again, there's others, why the many of the shares have acted so poorly. And basically, again, what this gold card cartel does, and they're very smart people, they manage excitement as well as the price rise. And they terrorize the shares, and... It, which many of them haven't gone anywhere in years now, and they, they, they know how to keep the focus off the gold-silver sector by raiding the market, controlling the shares, and it's quite something to see, and that's all going to blow up on them, but boy, it's taken a long time. And, and, and the larger picture, can you explain to the folks the, the larger picture, meaning, we, we, you know, I would say, and this is absolutely blowing my mind too, there's no doubt about it, that Cognitively, you know that this is happening. And, you know, if we go back to, I just read a letter that Goldman Sachs just sent into the, uh, about the Volcker rule that, you know, they're saying they had the nerve that, uh, this, 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 folks, they, they had, they actually had the nerve built to say that if the Volcker rule went in, that, um, it's possible that it would harm the and, and you could get into a financial crisis because it went in. I'm saying to myself, this is so far over the top, it's unbelievable. But it's an indication that how the banks can come at the public and people still are not paying attention. Well, it's just not fair because, you know, uh, uh, free enterprise and all that stuff is all about risk and reward. And when they, the big banks make big money and, and all this kind of stuff, but as soon as they, as, as happened in the financial crisis in 2008, as soon as they're about to go under, they get bailed out. Yes. And, and as soon as there's a rule to affect everybody, I know, again, J.P. Morgan, I've just read that uh, Jamie Dimon, their famed CEO, is very much against the go vocal rule, and it has to be rescinded. It's, there it is, Morgan again. Yeah. What do you think about the aspect that, you know, it, it's pretty amazing to me that whether, you know, when you look at the banks, they actually claim that they're capitalists, but the fact of the matter is, they, they're probably the biggest socialists out there. I mean, they got, they privatized the, the profits and socialized the losses. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? Yes, it is. And look at the deal they have with the government now in terms of uh, their spreads, in terms of us keeping the short-term money at zero or near, near to it. Yeah. Now, you know, what would be your advice for the folks that are listening to basically get, you know, we know that Bob Chilton is doing his job up there, but what else can be done that the public can get a fair deal in the metals market? Well, first of all, if you're talking about doing anything about it, people can get on a free list. Mine is a subscription website after a free trial at gata.org uh, just to get some of his misses, which are, he does a, just a tremendous job. In terms of investing, uh, you know, gold and silver have a long way to go. I think silver is you know, above 30 now. It's 33, going to go to over 100 easily in the years ahead. Uh, silver is going to have to go to three to five thousand dollars to clear the markets. And boy, if somebody can get a basket and talk to the right people, a basket of uh, junior exploration shares, some of these mid-sized gold silver companies, and get a basket and so your risk spread out, I think you've got ten baggers there that uh, uh, they've been they've been 
just for the lot of reasons, again, we don't have time to get into it, but it's been kept way down. Sure. And when, when the focus comes back on this sector, which it hasn't even come close yet in terms of the general public, a fortune's going to be made. And, 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 and I guess in the, in the context of, of what we're talking about, too, the, the gold and silver sector is so tiny, right? That's right. Yeah. I mean, and, and the, the, in other words, the public uh, is not paying any attention. Even a lot of people that have been gold and silver investors for years have been so tired of it, they're quitting. But when, this, when it happens, and it will, it will be make the Internet move, move look uh, rickety, or at least this one will be real. Uh, versus many of that was uh, j j just a lot of uh, Trump and stuff, although some of the gold, silver stocks won't be that good. But they're all going to go just the same way. Yeah. It, you know, well, it, it's, it's amazing to me, uh, even when I had Chilton on, that the, the understanding is that, yes, it is three and a half years. Uh, the bureaucracy is that slow, you know, but we're going to come to a conclusion. I'm looking, I'm saying to myself, you know, this is just absolutely amazing because... Um, Folks, just just common sense wise, if you know, I happen to be in that market, but think about it. If you're not in that market, do you think that you should be paying someone inside the government to have an investigation for three and a half years? And I don't, I'm not. All I'm saying is that we, you know, Bill, Chris, Richard, the public just want an answer. Just give us an answer, right? Well, here's what I think the problem is. I mean, you're exactly right. I mean, first of all, how can you investigate something for three and a half years and then say you find nothing? Right. I mean, what are you doing? Yeah, right. With all that time. That's a and great point. That's a great time, point. At the same time, Morgan is the Fed's bank. So, in fact, well, we believe the Federal Reserve and is, is, is a part of this operation. Yes. So, uh, how are you going to go if the government is investigating themselves? Yeah, and that's so the big. Not really, because it's a private. But, but basically, it's all involved with the Treasury Exchange Stabilization Fund. And the, so, what we think has happened is. They know what's going on. It's clear as can be, but they don't want to do anything about it. So they're just kicking the can and letting it go and waiting to see what happens. And that's the, that, is, that is the bigger issue, isn't it? Because the, the fact of the matter is that if you get the, the government behind the move, and we know now, I mean, it's a very fine line between government, bureaucracies, and banks. You know, the only, the only line there is that the banks can still make the money, but the bureaucracy, the bureaucracy is covering the banks. Yep. Yeah, pretty amazing. Listen, folks, Bill's site is lametropolitancafe.com. It's L-E-M-E-T-R-O-P-O-L-E-C-A-F-E.com. Uh, go check it out. Of course, you can uh, check out uh, GATA, G-A-T-A.com. Well, Bill, we appreciate you uh, out there, as always, uh, fighting the fight. The, the good, you know, I, I love the idea that, you know, uh, there's no doubt... You know, I remember the, the first few times I had you on, um, you know, we, we were talking 17, 18, 1900, and you, you got that. I mean, that, that's, that's the bottom line, and that's when gold was only at 325. The first I time know, I had you on, the, gold was 325. Tom, the most important thing I can stress for your, uh, for your listeners is that we understand the dynamic behind the market, which you don't get in too many other places, about what the real supply demand situ situation that the price of gold and silver every year are artificially suppressed, and it has to go up, at least, you know, and, and that's what's going to happen. And the real exciting move is coming. And once you know that one thing, then when you see corrections and things that don't work out right away, you understand it's the essence of why it's happening, and you're not scared about, gee, should I get out? Yes, and, and, and what Bill's specifically talking about, folks, this is not a speculation. That's a fact that's inside those papers that all of you can go research. And that's what's so neat about it. You know, I was looking at that, that speech of Chris Powell's, and it was amazing, the facts that were inside it. I mean, we actually, you know, let me see, we had that right on the, right on the breaking news, folks. Um, but that was amazing, looking at those facts. And that's what, that, I, I guess in the essence of all of this, it's amazing that that information is out there, but yet it still doesn't get as much traction as, in fact, it should. No, that's exactly right. Um, it, 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 the, the mainstream gold world, which is very aligned with the big banks and the establishment, doesn't want to hear about it. And so yeah. uh, they just uh, ignore it. And uh, it's really a scandalous. But what, it's the same as all the other scandals, Madoff, Enron, all the people that, blew, that were right and blew the whistle either got fired or were dismissed. Right. And all this is going to take is a couple of big rats jumping the ship, right? <laughs> 
That's right. Because that's going to happen. That, if, if I've learned anything in the last 30 years in the fight, well, in any business, but happening in the finance business, you're going to get the rats out there. You get a couple good FBI agents behind it, and then kaboom. Then the whole thing uh, blows up. It's, gonna it's be coming. Yeah, no doubt. Listen, Bill, thank you so much. Uh, we really appreciate it. Now, we look forward to having you on again. Anytime, Tom. Okay, man. Have Bye -bye. a great one. Have a safe one.